Okay, good morning, my wonderful, wonderful friends. This is going to be sort of a long dissertation about Brian Forrester's work, who is one of the premier explorers today. He is asking questions that nobody else will ask, and he's doing it in sort of a, a gentle way, which is not my way. <laughs> He's he's doing it in a way of just sort of asking the questions. I'm saying here's what it is. Now, I want some interaction and discussion about what I claim, and I am finding that not available. The people that are making the claims of what our past was and locked in literal stone and say this is what it is and that's you if you want to be educated these are things you have to say will not confront the evidence that we are presenting. And Brian Forrester is the one that is going out and asking these questions about what why is these things? What is this? Why, why does this look this way? Why does this not have a seam and why does this have a crazy seam? Why doesn't this have any seam this whole length and then other ones are block 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 and he's I did a video um, relating to the casing stones on the pyramids and they are literally ground up and placed there just like putty and I will show you that and I can present evidence to support that now this is the way I come across <laughs> I say here's the evidence here's my claim now somebody come back to me and that just doesn't happen all right, now, before we get started, I just want to let you know, you see over here, Paracas Elongated Skulls, DNA Results, uh, Brian Forrester. Now, I got a hold of him, oh, five, six years ago, whenever he first discovered these um, elongated skulls and had DNA tests done. I think it was DNA or CAT scan, I can't remember, but because I had both done on my stuff, DNA and CAT scans, and was totally rebuked and refused and absolutely 100% denied. So when I saw he did this. I got a, I got a hold of him and he was very gracious and contacted me back. And what I said was, has anybody taken any interest at all in your results from, like I say, I don't remember, was it DNA or CAT scans? And he sent back not a single person, zero. And that is what I have found myself. So he's been out doing the kind of research that needs to be done, but now we he need to confront people. So, this is where I come in. <laughs> now, I know exactly where to go inside these specimens to get the literally almost raw blood. And it said, excellent quality DNA sequence obtained from the 36-inch tip and the lung sample. Now, this is the 36-inch tip. Homo sapien mitochondrial cytochrome B gene and homo sapien mitochondrial D loop. Both of them the same, the lung and the 36-inch tip. This is the lung, same size as us. And everything is flat. You see how flat that is? Flat as a pancake. And the reason it's flat like that is because these things were in a flood. And anything can turn into stone from nucleophilic substitution. I have all this all figured out. It's all chemically done. Now, I extracted DNA from somewhere down in here, I know it's 10 years ago, uh, like a little pin drill, and you take out the samples, and I sent off the samples to be tested. I didn't contaminate them. This is a human lung. Any anatomist can tell you that. And any anatomist or any kid can tell you that's a goose head or some kind of duck head. And that's the feathers, and that's the goose's head with a little beak or whatever they call it and everything turns into stone you can make the pattern of the neck out if you know how to look at things but everything gets invaded by nucleophilic substitution now the problem with this 36 inch tip was it is from a giant human being and it is giant giant and this is what blew everything off the page when when and then i was assaulted you wouldn't believe it by the top academics and top universities and um, and I've been put in a box ever since and I this goes back six years ago this was uh, well, 7 of 2015 <laughs> so you know this goes back quite a ways now Brian's my only hope for for having anybody really look at things and ask the questions I'm gonna answer the questions I'm gonna try to if we can't figure it out we'll try to figure it out together how's that sound all right, this was the issue with mine. This is a gigantic fingertip, and I mean gigantic. It's like 30, 36 inches, something like that, from front to back. That is the bumper pad from one bone to the next that they rock on. Blood supplies, fingernail, 
absolutely huge. I, I mean, I ripped my shoulder trying to move that thing, and I broke off the fingerprints, and here's the fingerprints right here. That's the size of the fingerprints. They're the same size as, like, my thumb here, all right, about that size, is one ridge of a fingerprint on this, on this gigantic, I mean, it's absolutely enormous. And I went up inside the flesh of and uh, the artery and got that excellent quality DNA. And of course, the other one, the, the lung, was just just gushing blood. And I have other ones that literally do gush blood. Look at this. I mean, I have so much stuff; it's ridiculous. This is the one I sent uh, uh, I sent the sample from from that red spot right there. I, I went up inside there, drilled a hole, I can't remember what, what I did, but it, I, I remember I got it out of that red spot. And this thing had blood all over, blood leaking everywhere. Um, and you could get blood out of rocks, everybody's getting it now. There, it's, it's, there's, no, there's no, look at this. The blood's running out of these rocks. And what's, what's behind there is the fibrin, which is the clotting fi fabric, and then below that is the two blood vessels, the, the black and the red, and here they are right here. Uh, here's the scab, as I'm removing it from the, what they call that is fibrin, clotting factor fiber, and that allows the blood to, to make scabs. And here's where the two holes are. And you see this? That's the red blood side, see the red? That's the black blood side, that's the vein. And they, they have to move, you have to have blood servicing all these things. So as your bones move, these little vessels have to do all these kind of things. They do them inside these little foramens so they don't get all ripped up. All right, this one here was, uh, that's another one on my property. I have, I have 10 acres of absolutely 100% saturated with mud fossils. This is a left hand, and if you put your left hand out like that, you have the same tendon, you have the same bumper pad that runs around. This is grip skin. You see the silver stuff? That, that silver stuff is what peeled off, like, just like my other one where I knocked off the, the piece and showed the um, fingerprint. This is the same stuff. See, you know, falling off here. That is a tough, tough skin. This is not. You don't have that tough skin here on your bumper pad part of your your hand. Now, I and this was also DNA tested. That's human, and this is a fingertip from it. I have all kinds of stuff from this one. Um, the other ones, I just ha have little bits and pieces. This one, I have quite a substantial amount from from this particular giant, and that's three feet wide. I think it was three feet wide, somewhere in that area. I don't know. This goes back a long time ago. But it's in that area. But now it's just out in the woods. And um, there was no interest. So, Brian, I'm hoping that maybe someday we could collaborate a little bit. I'd love to. And, and anyone, anyone that wants to bring forth evidence, I will try to lend some support into the investigation. Now, you, you, you know, a lot of these things, I'm having a ton of people come to me and say, oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. Well, and 90% of it is not what I, they think it is. They look at just one side of this and one side of that. No, you have to look at everything. Even like this goose. If I looked at that side, I'd say, well, that's just a flat piece of mud. Well, that died in a flood, and that's why that side is, is and you could tell, the neck went down and the neck laid flat on the ground like this and they, it snapped off when it, it was picked up or, or somehow came apart. But it, you cannot just take one little shot of something and say that makes makes the deal. You have to figure out where the blood supply, and I can know where the blood supply is. See that right there? That's the artery. That's, and that you, could get, you could get blood out of that artery right there. And the vein is over on this side. The vein plugs up. You don't see them. Uh, the way you see the arteries. But that, I actually got some blood out of there just to see it and look at it in a microscope. It's blood. And 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 you, you could drill deep into there and you'd get fresh blood out of there. Because that's what happens. It gets sequestered. You see that? You see that brown looking stuff? I don't know if you can see it or not. But that's that's blood. And if you go and drill it in there, you're going to get fresh blood. Fresh goose blood. 
Okay, I guess I'm not going to get too deep into it today, but here's here's why I love the stuff that Brian does. He asks these questions. He sees the things nobody else sees. He's got eyes that work. Watch. And this is just a view to show you the incredible scale of the second pyramid. Now, what I want you to watch is this variable surface it dips in and out they took and it's not the same materials as what the casing stone is they took the casing stones because they could work them they were a homogenous stone they weren't all fragmented and and so forth like this kind of stone that they really could not work as well this is and the reason they could work it is because it was poured in place just like concrete watch now here we I am walking along the first course. All right. Well, how would that fill in like this? And it's a different material than this. And, and it happens all the way down the line here. Here's another one right there. That's not the same as this. This is not a natural stone. This is ground up and put in place. And you can see that the casing stone actually doesn't fit that tightly into what we presume is the original construction, which is odd. This is what I like about Brian. He brings up these things. This is odd. Why is this like this? They don't care. The people that are supposed to be the, the experts just dismiss these things. That's not, that didn't happen by accident. I mean, it's insane to think that that, that somebody chiseled a stone to make it fit in there it was obviously poured in place okay this was one of the interesting shots that i want to show you these are the granite blocks and i'm going to show you something that really blew my mind first of all it's it's got almost like a skin on it and that's a veneer caused by rapid oxidation or as it's set now watch this, this. of the granite casing stone still in place all right this is the gray this is the red. This is from a vein area where they ground all up a lot of veiny blood. And this is from a, a red area of blood ground up. Now, they're put together literally perfectly. And um, they were put there as, they were, they were poured. Literally, where do you uh, see the top? Strange tight? erosion patterns, but look how tightly fitting the casing stone originally was attempt now look at the top to remove all of the look at this and this my friends is what I am about to show you <laughs> you see that <laughs> they were grinding people up with these kind of wheels to make building materials out of them I think this guy made my counter okay this is what they were grinding up is muscle bone and flesh the flesh just turns into muddy uh, like a clay and these chunks though do not they they are a little different and then bone has a little bit of a difference too but the blood and the red fleshy stuff creates the the matrix that these pieces lay in and the blood there's red and black and yellow of blood um you don't see it here because this is a living creature but when you die the the blue blood turns you know, the, the uh, vein blood turns black. All right, remember I showed you that guy grinding people up? Well, he was making my countertop. This is all ground up tendon. You see that little box of tendon? You see these? This is blood. You see the black blood and the reddish brown blood? That is blood from flesh, and it was washed out afterwards, and it left the really heavy-duty stuff. The clay more or less got, got out of here and wash out and they left the tenderness bony sort of stuff in here and they tried to extract the metals when they flushed it they flushed everything out and they tried to get all the metals out at the same time and th this little piece was still stuck in here stuck to a piece of blood and th the metals are in the blood so this is not something that i don't understand now and you won't you, you can't miss it that's that's tendon, 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 tendon. They, they don't just lay inside in little bits and pieces and blocks and chunks everywhere in your body. They attach muscles to bone. And that's what happened. They ground them up. <laughs> now, there are other countertops that are granite that are not homogenous. Total different situation. Those are real. 
Okay, this is what my friend Carl Smith sent me this. This is nothing more than spam. It's just ground up meat. Only these have the tendons in it and the bits and pieces. And this is just beyond belief that they would have the gray and the red right next to each other. And it's port. They tried to chisel this away to try to get these blocks out. But you could see how absolutely flawlessly perfect they are flat. This was poured in situ. This was not something that happened by chiseling anything. This was concrete spam. All right, just so I understand, there is natural countertops of granite and so forth, they call it, whatever they want to call it. But these are, you're going to see all this kind of crazy patterning in them. And I mean, they can become very crazy because biology is just crazy. And you'll see blood and you'll see all the different products of chemistry of biology in there which will be metals and I had a guy send in you know people that do these countertops they saw my stuff and they said wow wow I was wondering why I install these countertops and man this stuff this in it's insane he said I can find gold in them I can find different crystals and all kind which you will and that's the stabilization process called nucleophilic substitution which happens inside creatures bodies in mud fossil conditions different salts, different acids, bile, urine, all of that stuff contributes to the matrix that ends up being the solidified flesh and tissue and body parts. Okay, I'm going to leave it at this for today. I am going to be doing, basically critiquing the evidence that Brian Forrester has brought forth to everybody and he is uh, you know I can't thank him enough for doing the things that he's doing and asking the questions he's asking now I am going to be trying to answer these questions and trying to make an assessment of what I see I could be totally wrong absolutely so and he has no nothing to do with me as far as my conclusions his his conclusions are his conclusions mine are mine and and you know um so I'm, what I mean by that is I'm not putting words in his mouth. I am not saying, Brian said this, Brian said that. No, absolutely. Brian said, what is this? What the hell is going on here? And I do too. But then I go to the chemistry. I go to all of the biology. And now I'm into the ancient text because I realized, oh, 10 years ago, that there were giants on the earth in those days. And then I realized the earth is the giants. The earth is made out of the giants. And then when I started to realize the ancient writings of Ovid and, and, and Hesiod and the Theogony and all of these stories of how our, you know, the Sumerians and how everything was created, it starts to make sense. It, it, it's insane. No question whatsoever for what we have been taught you feel like you've gone, you've gone insane but if you go back to what you were taught you find out we've been just fooled and and the people that are saying those things they are the ones that are insane and they cannot accept the reality of the situation we find ourselves in that is the insanity my friends and i intend to correct that because we if we don't know where we came from and we're unable to address the evidence then we're, you're just completely lost. How do you live like that? How can people live like this? It's, it's really, it's upsetting me. I gotta tell you the truth. I've been 10 years with so much evidence that not a, not, not a 10 year old could possibly deny it. And, and we, it's being denied by all the PhDs who are perfectly happy deluded. That's just the way it is right now. And until that changes, we are just circular, walking right around like little ducks walking around in a row. Make sure you follow the leader, follow the leader, follow the leader. Follow the leader. <laughs> well, I don't follow any leaders. I look for myself, and that's what Brian Forrest is doing. But he's in a little more tricky situation to me. I don't care. I don't have any business. I don't have anything to worry about. I don't care what people say about me. And and he's in a whole different situation. He's trying to bring these things forward. I have I have been crushed because of my approach. His approach is much more 
gentle, subtle. I had somebody send me something the other day. They said, you know, the problem with you is that your, your presentations are jarring. <laughs> and they are. They are to the average human being. They just, they go insane. And even like the stuff that I put on here, I put a, uh, a thing up here and there, all these people are attacking me. Very funny. Your guy is crazy. The guy's insane. You know, right? have you been drinking too much? You know, it goes on and on and on. And, and so th this is the kind of stuff I've had for 10 years. And I, I don't mean to bring it on you, Brian. I just mean to try to answer some of these questions. You're asking them, I'm trying to answer them, buddy. And I would love to engage because I think between the two of us we could make some pretty solid statements that are going to be very, very difficult for anybody to, to, you know, to dismiss. And, and, and at some point, you know, you have a much bigger reach than I do. And you have more people that are, you know, you've done a lot of work, let me put it that way. And I have, I'm just a sort of a observer, you know, analyzing things. You don't get much attention when you're in my position. And your position, though, is altogether different. You, you have a world presence that cannot be dismissed. You have done serious, serious work. Not just some armchair guy that just makes a bunch of statements. And I've done serious work too. I am an armchair guy. <laughs> but the work I do is is armchair work. I don't have to go out. I've got people like Brian doing all this stuff. I have literally hundreds of people that report to me about things that nobody is reporting on. And when I see them, that's why I have so many videos. I can't stop. Just, I, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed with things every day. So I figured my best opportunity here is to stick with Brian and just go through each one of his because he's there on site asking these questions and I'm going to try to answer them. All right, I love you all. Stay with us. Stay with me. Stay with Brian. Stay with reality.